somehow they got confused. In my view, taking you out of the equation, his brother would still be alive. I don't understand how you're going up there at one minute you want a divorce and to get Mr. Humphrey mad enough to kill. I don't know. It doesn't matter if he killed. You were the one that put him up to it. You're awful lucky, ma'am. You're going to get out in your 40s, and my 40s weren't too bad. I just hope you don't kill again. What a moment inside the courtroom. Lindley Rennick murdered her husband, Ben. Murdered him. I mean, she planned and plotted the whole thing. Tried once, wasn't successful. Tried again and, and got it done. She had people helping her. She was found guilty of murder and today sentenced to just 13 years for the murder plus three. 13 plus three for murder. It's got me outraged. Uh, on social media, people are livid. Now imagine, just imagine, if that was your family member, your loved one, your brother, who was murdered like that. And the person who did it, as the judge said, is going to get out. Now, it's not the judge's fault. The judge is following the recommendation of the jury. That's the way it works in Missouri. But think about that. I'm going to bring in our special guest joining us tonight from Wentzville, Missouri, is Ben Rennick's brother, Sam. Sam, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And, and our thoughts um, with you and your family, I know this entire, um, entire thing you've gone through, through years, has been absolute torture. Um, and, and today was, you know, I don't think much better. I mean, there is some, there's some level of, of responsibility she's being held to, but not nearly what it should be in this case. Let me start here, though, Sam. When you were speaking today in court, at one moment I noticed that you stopped for just a moment, and I couldn't tell because we only had one camera in there, but it seemed like Lindley Rennick, your sister-in-law, was smirking. The woman who murdered your brother was smirking while you were speaking in court today? Thank you, Vinny. Yes. Uh, when I was referencing the loss of our family farm, she stared right at my face and smiled at me. Uh, it was a tough day, but uh, uh, it, it's, it is what it is, and I appreciate the Judge Crane and the decision that he made today. Yeah, it, I, I mean, I was surprised when all this went down with, with the verdict, and obviously the judge uh, did what he could do today. Um, how are you holding up? And give us an honest assessment, okay. because this is, this, this is what I want people to understand, what it's like to go through what you've gone through. Because people look at these cases sometimes and say, oh, yeah, the defendant. You know, there are victims, there are families. Explain to us honestly tonight how you are. It's tough. It changes you. Going through something like this, it changes you and your perspective of the world. And at this point in time, we've made the decision that, that all that matters is is our children, Ben's children, moving forward, putting this behind us and trying to uh, salvage what we have left of our family. It, it's been a, a long, dark, hard road, and, and this is a, a chapter that we, we want to put behind us. Uh, unfortunately, she's only going to be in, in prison for the time that she was granted. However, uh, now it's time for us to heal, and, and we're ready for that. That is great to hear. Um, you mentioned the children, Ben's children, in court today. You said you haven't seen them in five years? That's right. Why is that? And, and is there anything you're going to be able to do to change that so those children understand who their dad, who their dad was? We, we need to give them time to heal. We understand that this, is, this was a tough Christmas for everyone. And, um, you know, we, we, we need to give them the opportunity to, to put the, this, to assess things and to, to accept what's happened. However, they, you know, we, we know for a fact that they haven't been told the truth. And I think that hopefully in time that, that comes to them. However, you know, we, we, we're going to be there for them. And um, we just pray that uh, Lindley's side of the family gives us the opportunity to, to reunite and, and salvage what's left of uh, what we have together. And, and that's 
where the children are. They're with her side of the family, the side of the family that she is from, the murderer. That's right. Uh, after, um, after the murder, uh, it took three years to make an arrest. Uh, she isolated Lindley, isolated herself completely during that time uh, with the children and kept the, them from everyone. And, uh, then even after she was uh, arrested and put on an ankle monitor, it, it, it's been five years. It's been a long road. And uh, I hope now that we all have the opportunity to heal and uh, this is the next step in that process. Absolutely. Um, was there anything, and I know there are limitations when it's time for a victim impact statement. Um, each court, each judge has different rules and limitations about what can and can't be addressed. Was there anything that you wanted to say today, but weren't permitted to or felt, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that inside the courtroom? No, I, I try to keep it as tasteful as possible. You know, I, this is, We've been waiting for this for a long, long time. And while we're not happy with the verdict, obviously, um, we are very happy with Judge Crane and the decision that he made moving forward. It was clear that he understood what had happened. Unfortunately, I, I truly believe that the jury got it wrong in this case. Uh, it's, a, it's unfortunate, wildly unfortunate, that something like this could go with a punishment as, as, as light as it, as it did. However, uh, you know, justice has, has been done. We're ready to move forward, and I, and I pray that uh, the kids are going to be okay after all of this, all of our kids. Because the other part of this is uh, she, she was putting, trying to put the blame on you. She was trying to say that you were somehow responsible for the murder of your brother. That's beyond outrageous, beyond outrageous. So... Um, Explain to us, because you were a family at one point, right? You guys were, were family. Obviously, you love your brother, and your brother chose to, to marry Lin Lee, so you accepted Lin Lee into your family. At what point did you realize that, wait a minute, wait a minute, she's the one that did this? We were close. We all lived on the same property together. We spent the weekends together with the kids, and... Um, it wasn't until after the murder when she isolated herself. And then quickly after that, we found out that she'd entered into her, another relationship uh, shortly after the murder and became pregnant with her third child. Uh, we, that's when we knew that, that, uh, that she was involved in this. Uh, it, had, it took us so long to accept the fact because she was living a, a life that we were completely unfamiliar with. Uh, another life, a person we didn't know at all. And it took a lot to accept that, to that um, she had a whole world that we were unfamiliar with. and uh, She took so much from ourselves and those kids. Absolutely. Well, Sam, I know this is a difficult, long day for you, so we appreciate you coming on tonight. Um, I just, uh, and again, our thoughts are with you and I hope someday those cousins get to spend some time together because uh, that's such a special bond. And I know you'll do everything uh, in your power to, to make that happen, but make it happen at the right time. So, uh, Sam, we really appreciate it. Um, take care of yourself and your family. Thank you for the opportunity, Vinny. All right. Whew, what a tough day.